Hi and welcome back to the course. In this video we're going to be creating our first Flask RESTful app. It's going to be a really simple app, just to get you acquainted with sort of what it looks like. And then in the next video we're really going to get into creating the project for this section. The first thing to do is to, in the folder that you've got your VMV, as you can see I'm going to list the structure of this folder and there is a folder in here called the VMV. So not inside this folder but beside the folder I'm going to create another folder called code. So as you can see if I do ls now we've got two folders, vnv and code. And then we're going to cd into code or change directory into code. Now we are in code I'm going to launch atom and you can do so by typing atom dot. This I think only works in Mac and Linux. If you're on Windows just launch atom as normal. It really doesn't take much longer. And then when Atom is running, which it is just starting up in here, here we've got Atom. Now that Atom's running, we can go ahead and create a new file. And I'm going to call that app.py as normal. Remember, we're going to be running this file from our virtual environment. And therefore, we have Flask and Flask RESTful already available. So the first thing to do is to import those two. So from Flask, I'm going to import Flask. And from Flask underscore RESTful, I'm going to import resource and API. And these two things are going to be necessary. A resource represents something that our API sort of represents. That was too many represents in one phrase. For example, if our API is concerned with students and it can return students and create students, a student would be a resource. If our API is concerned with items, then an item might be a resource. If our API is concerned with pianos, a piano might be a resource, and so on. So a resource is just a thing that our API can return and create and things like that. Resources are usually mapped into database tables as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, and then we're going to create our app just by typing app equals flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore. We know the drill with this one. And here's the new thing. Flask is going to be our app, and our app is going to have all these roots, as we saw in the last section. And then we can create new roots and assign methods to them and things like that. And we're going to create something else, which is going to be the API. And the API, as you can see, is imported from Flask RESTful. And that's just going to allow us to very easily add these resources to it. And we're going to be able to say, OK, for this resource, you can get and post. For this other resource, you can get and delete. For this other resource, you can get, put, post and delete, and so on. So it's going to be making things a lot easier. But obviously, there's no way to explain this without like a proper sort of example. So I'm going to give you a quick example now. The API works with resources, and every resource has to be a class. So for example, a class student that then inherits from the class resource. If you've not looked at inheritance before, I'd suggest you go back to the first section of this course and quickly go through the object-oriented programming refresher that's in the first section. Sorry, the second section, apologies. And um, because that will cover sort of what inheritance is. Essentially, all we're doing is we're also retrieving some stuff from the resource uh, class. So our student class now becomes essentially a copy of the resource class, but we can also change things. So it is not going to be an exact copy. It's going to be a copy with a couple of things changed. The first thing that's going to change is the get method. So this get method is going to take in self, which is just normal whenever you create a, a method in an object, and also a name. And that's going to be the name of the student. OK. And then we're going to do something like return a dictionary where student is name. So this is going to be a really basic API. It's not really going to do anything except return whatever we give it. Okay, so now we have our resource. And what we've said is that this resource can only be accessed with a get method. 
If we wanted, for example, to allow post, we would create a post method here and so on. But we're going to look at that just in the next couple of videos. For this video, let's stick to just get and not actually do anything, just return a dictionary. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say api.add underscore resource student. And this is going to essentially tell our API, OK, this resource that we've created, the student, now is going to be accessible via our API. But as you can see, we've never put any endpoints in here, any routes. So how are we going to access this student? Do we have to do something like app.root here? Student? Is, is this the way to do it? And the answer is fortunately, no. We have to do something like this. At the end of the add resource, put in a comma and say slash student slash string colon name. So we're going to access students like so. Okay, so it's going to be something like HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 5000, just the normal stuff. And then slash student, which is what we've got here, slash and the name. And we've looked at this in the past as well. This name variable is going to go straight into the parameter here. So you can imagine that we are doing app.root slash student string name. These two things here are essentially the same. Um, but we no longer have to do the decorator ourselves, which kind of saves us a bit of hassle as well. OK, and finally, app.run and port equals 5000. This is not necessary. That's the default. Uh, port 5000 is the default, but nevertheless, I like putting it in just to be a bit more explicit. So here we have our Flask RESTful app. And it doesn't really do much. Um, but we are going to essentially follow this structure over the next few videos, in fact, the rest of this section, and we're going to be creating a, a more professional REST API, and we're going to include things like error handling and authentication and things like that. At a very small level, it's going to be a small app, but over the next few sections, we're going to be expanding in each of those areas, and we're going to create like, some really cool projects. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to launch Postman, that I've got here. And what I'm going to do is just go to the new tab here, and I'm going to do a sample request. I'm not going to put it in any collection or anything like that. Of course, first of all, make sure that your app is running. So make sure you are in the virtual environment and do Python app.py. That should get it running. And then go back to Postman. And what we're going to do is HTTP colon slash slash 107.0.1 colon 5000 and then student and then Rolf. That's the, the student's name. And as you can see, we get back the student in the form of a dictionary, just as we said here in our get method. We're just returning student is the name and in Postman, make sure that you are doing a get request and you're requesting this URL and you should get back this thing here. Of course, if you change this for Chris, for example, that will then return Chris. If you change the method to be such as a post, what you'll get is the usual message that the method is not allowed for the requested URL because this doesn't accept post. It only accepts get. OK, and similarly, if you access something incorrect, you'll just get the usual 404 not found. That's the error code for not found. Um, so make sure that you are accessing the right URL. Um, and that's really everything for this video. We've created a simple Flask RESTful app that nevertheless gives us a lot of info regarding how these apps are structured, these APIs. It's a matter of having the API, defining our resource, which in this case we've only got one, which is this student, defining the methods that this resource is going to accept. In this case, it's only get, but we could have others like post, delete, put, and so on. And then deciding what that method is going to do when the endpoint is called, 
and then finally add the resource in here and determine how it's going to be accessed as well. In this case, slash student slash name, and the name parameter always goes to the methods parameter as well. Finally, run the app and try it out in Postman. I'd recommend you do this. Write this code, try it out in Postman, make sure everything works. And as we go along in this section, do code along with me as well. I've created the videos in such a way that you can always code along and try things out as we move along, just for your benefit. So it would be silly to waste that opportunity that you've got now. Without further ado, thanks for joining in, and I'll see you in the very next video.